Welcome to Open Source Spotlight. We invite open source authors and ask them to show the tools they're working on. Today we have Alona. Hi, Alona. Tell us a few words about yourself and about the tool you want to show us. Uh, hi, Alexei. My name is Alona. Currently, I'm a data scientist in DLT Hub. I worked more than two years uh, as a machine learning computer vision engineer in um, mid medicine startup. Um, I worked a lot with data, uh, collected, cleaned, participated uh, in development of our own ETL pipelines. Uh, I know firsthand uh, what unstructured and messy data is and how painful uh, it is to work with it. That's why I was so excited and inspired when I discovered this project and even more when I became a part of it. Which project? Dilty Hub. Yeah. <laughs> Can you tell us a few words about that project? <laughs> yeah. Um, Dilty Hub what, what is a... Yeah, it's an open source um, Python library. Um, um, this tool helps people turn messy data into structured, regularly updated data sets uh, using Python. It's like building easy data pipelines without waiting for real experts. Um, let me show how it works. Um, I can share it's my good. screen. How do it works? Uh, Dilti extracts data from a source, inspects its structure to generate a schema, organizes, normalizes, and verifies the data, and loads the data into a destination, such as database, data warehouse, data lake, seven file system. Um, so, uh, hello, I give you uh, some examples how to use uh, Dilti um, Hub uh, properly. Yeah. Um, let's start with installation. Uh, since Dilti is a simple Python library, installing it will be normal via pip. So just run pip install Dilti. Uh, for, uh, for test cases, we will um, uh, we will be using DuckDB as a destination because it doesn't need to be configured. It is fast and easy to install. So it makes sense to install the DLT right away along with the additional uh, dependencies. Um, and please, users, <laughs> use clean virtual environment uh, for your experiments. It's uh, often it's uh, the biggest problem. It's the reason of your of, of your mistakes. Um, okay, let's look um, at the most primitive example of loading data. Uh, into data data hope like to be database. Uh, let's break down the code step by step. Uh, first import DLT as usual Python library. Uh, there's some sample uh, of data. Uh, there we create a pipeline with DLT pipeline function. There you can set pipeline name, uh, destination. So you can easily change it uh, for a big uh, query, for example. But um, now we're going to work with DuckDB. Um, we can set that to set name. And we're going to use full refresh true, uh, which means we want to refresh the entire data set during loading. Do not use it for production, please. Uh, this feature is more for development. So uh, does it mean that it will remove all the data that is already there in the data set? Uh, no, no, it's, it's it's gonna add a suffix for your data set. Uh, suffix uh, depends on uh, date. So you're gonna create new data sets in your pipeline. And DLT, if you wanna um, look at this data, DLT will take the last one. So yeah, it's not fully refreshed. It's Bit different, but uh, it's really really useful for development. Okay, run this code, and we see uh, load information, uh, pipeline name, um, data set name. Oh, you can see this suffix. It's it creates only for full refresh, uh, etc. Uh, DB destination. You can find your dump uh, in this address. Um, yeah, now explore this data uh, to see schema 
we're going to use this DLT clear command, DLT pipeline show. Our pipeline name is quick start. So we're going to, uh, first we should install Streamlit. Uh, okay, I already installed it, <laughs> but you should. And uh, let's look at our data. Yeah, it's just simple. Uh, okay, now you can see um, our um, data scheme. There's there's going to be all tables you have in this pipeline. Now we have only one table, it's users. You can look at the data. Oh, Alice and Bob here. You can query this data uh, with SQL query. Uh, we can look at load info. There is a pipeline name, destination, dump address, um, how many tables you have, how many rows in these tables you have. So there's really useful. This example was a toy. Of course, uh, with DLT, you can load practically any data uh, you deal with. <clears throat> Whether it's a list of dictionaries, JSON files, uh, CSV files, data from APIs, databases, and much more. Um, when you're working with your data, DLT does the heavy lifting for you. It creates and updates tables, infers data types, and seamlessly deals with nested data all without requiring you to write complex data manipulation code. Let's dive into an example where we load nested JSON data and see how DLT handles it effortlessly. Uh, yeah, there's example of data. Um, and run this code and look, ah, ha, ha. sure, we should run this <laughs> cell. Um, Okay, pipeline is created and look at the data. There is a few tables, JSON data and JSON data children. Uh, first, we'll look at the JSON data. There is if and wait, Wendy. Uh, there's a children. Ah, yeah, it's, it's a children table. Yeah. So because it had uh, an nested list, it created uh, multiple tables, right? And then you kind of need to do a join between. Yes, yes, yes. So it handles nested data. It's uh, If you have a list of nested uh, data, it's going to be a children table. Uh, if you have, for example, just one, uh, one more dig instead of value. So we'll look at, uh, at the data and see how it works we have name and job um uh, unwrapped oh, how to say it mm -hmm. um, yeah unwrapped. Understood. yeah yes so you can see you don't need to do anything good scheme it's uh creating automatically um so um and, and if uh, I run it one more time and then in a new JSON object, I have a new field. Will it update the scheme automatically when it sees it? If you add one more data, yeah. for example, one more value. Um, one more key, yeah. Yeah, sure. It's going to be updated. Um, now we're working on data contracts uh, when you can lock your scheme. For example, if you don't want to add new um, fields or for example, some spam or something like that, you can lock it. But uh, the default uh, behavior is to update your scheme. Okay, so let's move on to something more exciting, loading data from an API. Um, in this part of our demo, we're going to demonstrate how you can use LT to load data, data directly from an API into a data set. And this is especially handy when you're working with real-time data sources um, like GitHub, and you want to incorporate uh, the latest information into your analysis. Uh, here we're demonstrating how to load the 100 most recent issues from our own DLT repository and store them in the issues table uh, within a DuckDB. Uh, the first step involves making a request 
um, to the API. Um, create pipeline. Uh, set table name issues. Yeah, that's clear. Run this pipeline and look what we got. Yeah, we got all our issues um, in tape in issues that uh, table. Ooh. And now, toys aside, let's look at something interesting. In this part, we're going to explore the concepts of appending and replacing data in your tables. It's crucial to understand these behaviors and they um, determine how you how your data is managed and updated with your data sets. Um, we said full refresh false as a, in a real project. Um, yeah, we're gonna run this example twice and notice that each time a copy of this data is added to a table uh, in our tables. Okay, look at the data. Yeah, that is Bob. Two two rows. Run it again. Oh no, it's duplicated. How we can handle it? Uh, so we call this load mode append. Uh, it is very useful uh, when, for example, you have a new folder created daily with JSON um, file logs, and you want to test them. Okay, we can add argument write disposition in our apply and run function is replace value. Run this, look at the uh, data. Yeah, at this book as, as a previous pipeline. And it was fully replaced this time. So um, no duplication. But if there is a new record now with a new ID, then uh, it will create a new one. So right now, if you oh, yeah. add, uh, I don't know, Charlie to this yeah. data set, and execute course. it one more time. So it will replace right. Alice and Bob and create a Charlie. All right. Yes, it's fully refresh. Um, OK. Oh, um, Charlie. In the <laughs> Charlie. Yeah, 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 always, always. Um, in the next segment of our demo, uh, I'm going to show how you can fine tune to the loading behavior using the DLT resource decorator, this one. Uh, this allows you to perform incremental loading, uh, which means you will only load new data since the last time your pipeline was run. It's an amazing way to optimize your data workflows and save time and resources. Um, so we added we added only this small function, uh, yield uh, data, and uh, we use DLT resource uh, decorator and created it, uh, a value with DLT source incremental function. Let's look how it works. First time I see this uh, construction yield from somewhere. Um, cool. What does it do? So it kind of iterates over all the elements uh, from the data list and returns yeah, them yeah. one by one. Yeah, it's, it's just a generator. Yeah, it's a generator of just iterating uh, cool. this uh, list. Okay, okay let's run it. Um, and look at the data. For example, now we have Alice, Bob, uh, chat, uh, and now uh, there was added one more um, user, for example, Carol, and look what it got. Yeah, edit was added. No duplications, no, uh, it wasn't fully replaced. Only Carol was added. Um, okay, let's consider how we can update our data without any duplications. Um, let's run this um, pipeline, look at the data. Yeah, we have uh, four users that were created and updated at the same time. Uh, what if one of our users changed his gender and changed his name? For example, Boba. It was happened um, 
later as tomorrow um, and look how it works. Okay, yeah, Boba was updated and other users for, for this example, we use right disposition merge and we set primary key as uh, ID. Uh, this key can help uh, understand TLT library, how we should uh, identify this data samples, how we should merge them, what is primary key. Um, okay, I'll look at the memorial life example. Uh, we can approve the GitHub API example um, above and get on the issues that were created since last load. Uh, we have a really simple function. We use updated at uh, as incremental uh, variable, as you remember from previous example. We have URL. We use last value of our incremental variable uh, to request on the new issues. Um, we set primary key, right disposition merge, mm. uh, set tab, table name issues. If we do not set it, uh, the table name will be get issues by default. Um, there is simple paginations and uh, that's it. Let's run it. Okay, there is four shots. Yeah, get all our issues here. And uh, now we can run, uh, we can deploy the script uh, on the daily schedule and each day uh, you will load only issues created after the time of the previous pipeline run. So it's ready to production example. And uh, by deploying, you mean the, this code snippet you had? So we would put this in a Python script and put inside cron or some other schedule, right? On the sure, program. sure. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, actually, mostly we use Python scripts. Uh, Python notebook is uh, just for demo and yeah, and uh, prototyping. Yes. Uh, and of course, we have some existed verified sources you can use easily. Uh, look at this list. We have like twenty verified sources. Um, Settle for Sarah Table, Notion Jira, a lot of them. Uh, look at the um, Toy Source Pokemon and init with a DLT CLI command. DLT init Pokemon is a verified source name, and DuckDB is destination name. You can easily change it for query or what you want. Um, Okay, I already edited this. That's why there is no. Um, okay, you can see this folder were, were created. They can put your secrets. Uh, there is a config file. Uh, there you can find source code of verified source. It's easy, it's just request uh, by URL. Um, yeah. And there is an example how you can use this verify source. We create pipeline, uh, set uh, source, import source from Pokemon folder, and just run it. Okay, let's run this example. And look at the data. Okay. We got two tables, berries and Pokemon. Uh, look at the Pokemon table. Oh, yeah, we got all of them. Charizard, Pulpozaur, yeah, all in there. Amazing. So I think that's it for this demo. 
So the last one, just to make sure I understood correctly. So the last one was an example of how to use like a template or an example. Um, yeah. So then we do this and then what we can do with these files is adjust them with our stuff, right? So we take this Pokemon example, we yeah. change the files and replace with our APIs, our data, right? And then we can just run them. Uh, yeah, if you have your own API, you maybe make sense to create your own by, by uh, source. Uh, but uh, we have uh, a lot of prepared, so you can use already existed. Um, so you don't need to change API because it's uh, mm -hmm. already here. Okay, yeah. that's really cool. Um, yeah, it's so handy. I, I love it so much. I use it every time. <laughs> and you said you're a data scientist, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And you work in uh, the DLT team. How many people together with you work on this project? Uh, now there's 11 of us. We have four founders and uh, simple workers. <laughs> simple workers. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, did you have uh, any external contributors already? Yeah, we have uh, some freelancers. We have uh, uh, prepaid freelancers. <laughs> I mean, uh, just the contributors who want to be a part of this uh, project. Uh, yeah. But what I meant is more like people who just want to contribute to open source and uh, they yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. That, that... That's what I said. Yeah, we have uh, freelancer, uh, paid freelancers, and we have uh -huh. people who just contributed because it's open source and it's it's cool. Mm -hmm. And if somebody wants to contribute, uh, how do they go about this? What's the plan for them? Uh, we have. Uh, oh, I can show you my. Uh, you can go to our tiltyhub.com uh, website. They can find. Uh, get excited, some tutorials, walkthroughs, and uh, of course, you can find uh, all information about our GitHub repository, how you can contribute, how you can join our Slack community. Uh, we have really, um, I, I, I want to say popular, but it's, uh, I mean, it's alive. This community is super alive we, uh, all the time. Uh, helping people to uh, to help. ah to work with the uh, this library. Ah. <laughs> so the community is active, and if somebody wants to start using the library or contribute, the place where they should start is the community, right? So they join the community and they say, "Okay, my name is uh, I don't know, Alexei." I want to start contributing, what do I do, right? And then you will help. You can go directly to our... Issues. Uh, to our Tilty Hub repository. And you can find, uh, uh, get involved, get with the community, report issues, track progress in our GitHub project, contribute to verified source, uh, or contribute to uh, to our core. And there's contributing guidelines. That's really yeah. cool. Yeah, so there's full information. You can start without joining community, but of course it's better to talk with us first. So we, we answer quickly and uh, we're always mm -hmm. for any contribution, even if it's, mm -hmm. it's one, just one uh, um, words in our documentation. Welcome. <laughs> so if somebody is not sure which issue to pick up, which issue to start with, then definitely go to the community and talk to you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What are your plans? What do you want to work on next? Um, oh, good, good, good question, because I have a different project at the same time. <laughs> so it's not like I have just one thing to do. Um, Oh, now we're working a lot on our documentation because it's super important for any open source, uh, any any library, um, especially open source. Uh, I work on some demos uh, with our partners uh, and with our 
potential mm -hmm. partners and uh, okay <laughs> there's nothing special like helping people who are joining our slack okay <laughs> okay last question uh, do you have any advice to anyone who is watching this video? Uh, use CLT. It's super mm -hmm. handy. And uh, join our Slack. <laughs> and uh, use structured and clean data. We can help you with it. Okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Elena. Wonderful demo. Really great tool that you're working on. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for presenting. And thanks everyone for watching the demo. Don't forget to go to DT Hub and give them a star. Yeah. yeah. Thank you.